Michael St. Moore Shield, good to see you. That's just a selection of some of the photographs in the book. And you've been working in this area for around eight years. What did you try to achieve with this? Um, what I was trying to do with the photographs was to actually show the incredible variety um, of countries and landscapes where these cemeteries are to be found today. And what's really interesting is that by combining the pictures and having the information by the side of them, you get a real, it makes the history very accessible. Yes, I mean, this is the whole point of it, with the 100 years coming up, uh, to explain to people about these cemeteries and some of the stories of the men that are in those cemeteries. Well, let's go through just a few of them, and uh, starting with one in France. Tell us about the story behind this picture. Um, this is a cemetery called Ovillers. Um, it's on the Somme, and it's what they call a consolidated cemetery, a concentrated cemetery. Basically, these are bodies which have been brought in from maybe other cemeteries and all over the battlefield, uh, because the first day of the Somme, July the 1st, 1916, uh, there were nearly 20,000 dead. And um, so that's it's one of the cemeteries that was created. It was very close to the front line at the time. And obviously you went up in an aircraft to go and take that photograph. To show the scale, because it, it is so big, you know, when you're on the ground, it's, you, you can't really convey it. And the idea was to actually show the, the, the size of the cemetery, but also to put it in the landscape where the men actually fought and died. You didn't only do big, you did small as well. Let's have a look at the one from Fafamont. Uh, tell us the story behind this particular one. Fafamont is actually a unique cemetery in France in that the, it lies in the middle of a field, and these are three soldiers who were killed um, sheltering in a shell hole and they were buried where they were killed and it has been preserved ever since. In the middle of a field, are these kind of things hard to find? Would you go and ask the locals when you were going there? Oh no, they're, 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 they're all known, they're all marked on maps and they are regarded as official um, cemetery sites. And even smaller than that, you went to one in Jamaica, didn't you? Tell me about that. Uh, well, Jamaica, I was actually, I, I'd gone out to Jamaica to see my son and I was suddenly realised there was a Commonwealth War Grave Cemetery and I went there and it was totally overgrown because it's, you know, very lush. Vet, and I was lucky enough to meet the, the, the local village stonemason, Calvin Hill. Um, he was smoking a rather interesting cigarette, I must admit. <laughs> um, but he was very proud of the fact that, and you can see the cemetery, the, the actual grave is immaculately kept. It's, it's surrounded by sort of vegetation. Mm. And it's the one grave in the cemetery which is, you know, well kept. You talked earlier about what you hope to achieve with the book. What do you want a reader to take away? Um, I want to take the reader to take away the extraordinary range of work which the Commonwealth War Graves Commission do. They've been doing it for 100 years and they do it in all sorts of countries, all sorts of different conditions. And it is work which is quite, I think, quite exceptional, uh, the care that they take of, the, of the, the dead of the two world wars. Michael St. Morshield, good to speak to you and thank you for coming in. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you.